Well, the big news of the morning is uh, the capital raise. Uh, shares were suspended yesterday while uh, you had a new issue. $1.60, that's a 7.5% discount on the current share price, raising $650 million. Are you pleased with how that proceeded? Listen, I'm, I'm very pleased. Yesterday was a truly historic day for our company. We're 170 years old and we're trying to build a new future. We've come out with a long set of announcements, a new strategy, and we had a very strong support from our shareholders. Um, now, you had a, uh, a, also a plan to uh, sell the life insurance business resolution life for $3 billion. Uh, that fell through after it was blocked by the RBNZ. There's a plan to try again. If that gets blocked, is there a plan C? As a CEO, you always have backup plans, but we feel pretty confident that with this new recut deal with our partner Resolution Life, we have de-risked execution, we are providing more cash to our shareholders, so we feel pretty confident about the deal. Francesco, we have breaking news at the moment. Let me just bring this in. President Trump has named Joseph McGuire to be acting intelligence director. Of course, this coming after Dan Coats had announced that he would resign effective August 15th. President Trump now naming Joseph McGuire to be acting intelligence director. Uh, we have seen the uh, department actually facing some changes with the deputy director of national intelligence, Sue Gordon, also uh, leaving her position, according to people familiar with the matter at the moment. We're just hearing from President Trump that Joseph McGuire is going to step up as acting intelligence director. He's the current director of the National Counterterrorism Center. Uh, he retired from the U.S. Navy, but he will be acting. Uh, he will step up as the acting director for intelligence. In the meantime, Francesco, let me just turn back to you. Of course, we continue to see uh, some challenges for your company at the moment. If we're seeing AMP uh, become a bit uh, more integrated into the wealth manager, wouldn't this ha come with more risks at a time when other big banks are actually warning about some challenges when you become a more integrated institution? Listen, we think that advice is getting affordable, compliant, accessible advice to all Australians is a significant societal need. Um, we see all the large competitors exiting as underlying the challenge and disruption of the industry, but we see this also as a huge opportunity. And that's why our new strategy repivots the business to be client-led, and we really aim to take leadership in wealth management and build a new wealth management model for this country. Do you worry about perhaps conflict of interest and more poor practices that have really plagued the whole Australian industry? Clearly, as I said, the industry is going through a lot of transformation. I think yesterday was a very historic day for our company because we tried to draw a line in the sand, put the legacy behind us, and really pivot towards a future model. If I look as a newcomer to Australia and the financial services landscape, I think what I see is AMP as a company, probably more than any other financial institution, that's really committed to uh, embrace the new and committed to change. We have a new board, we have a new team, we're leaning into client remediation. So we are putting the past behind us and looking optimistically at the future. Uh, one of the hangovers uh, from the past 12 months is, of course, the share price uh, took a real beating. Um, it's nearly halved uh, on year. Are you concerned at all that that's making AMP a potential acquisition target? And are you doing anything to mitigate or defend against that? Well, the best, the, the share price performance clearly is not satisfactory. I am here to build a sustainable business for the long term. And so a good strategy and good execution and support for our shareholders, I think, is the best solution to that. Well, you've got a three-year plan uh, to, to fix the advice business and move the, the company forward, transform things. Uh, investors, when can they expect to see a dividend again? How long is that going to take? Well, we outlined our dividend policy. Uh, this year is a challenging year, and so we're not paying a dividend for the half. We raised capital to start implementing the new strategy, which is a restructuring of wealth, but we also have two assets that are growing very well that are not talked about enough. AMP Capital, which is our asset management business, 
and our bank, which is a really interesting challenge, our bank. As we get the life proceeds from the deal next year, we will resume a more normal uh, shareholder policy. What about investor outflows that we have seen about three billion Aussie dollars in the first half? When do you expect to stem those? Well, my experience has been reputation and trust in this business can be lost very quickly and it takes some time to recover. The best way to do that is to fix our services and gain back the trust of clients one interaction at a time. My estimate, as I said last year, is that this will take two to three years to really fully turn around. What about the cost-cutting measures that you're implementing, cost savings? Would that also mean job cuts down the line? What are we expecting? Uh, clearly, part of building the new AMP is not just having a more focused business model, but is also changing the culture of our company to be more client-led, more entrepreneurial, and more accountable. We clearly need to become a more agile organization. And so one of the big levers that we have to return value to shareholders as we transform the business is to you know, reduce our cost base and be more capital efficient in the meantime as we recycle capital from an insurance business, which is very capital intensive, to you know, more capital light and higher returning businesses. Um, one is unfortunate timing in some ways because one of the challenges you're going to face, along with pretty much all of your competitors, is this low yield environment. Uh, what's your plan for dealing with that? So the low yield environment is, is something that I've experienced in the rest of the world. I think for some countries like Australia, it's probably a, a newer phenomenon. I would say two things. One, a low yield environment plays very strongly to our real assets business. So infrastructure and real estate, where we're a global leader and with clients looking for yield, they will want to put more money in these asset classes. Um, I also think it creates an issue for people who are retiring and hoping to cash the coupons for retirement. That speaks to the need of having much better advice to be able to reshift the portfolios and work through this transition. So on our two of our core businesses, it is actually supportive. 